Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. That's right. It's time for the Eddie and Webby Podcast. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to bust out some theme song action for you. Check it out. The Eddie and Webby Show is the place to be. They're talking about beer and pickleball and technology. So if you didn't know, now you know. Because it's time for the Eddie and Webby Show. On today's episode, Eddie and Webby reveal their favorite smoked meats. This is the Eddie and Webby Podcast. Oh, hey, how's it going? This is Webby, not Eddie. And I'm Eddie, and this is our 39th podcast. Oh, yeah. Episode number 39. And Eddie, uh, something I just realized right before we were about to start the show is this is our last episode in our 30s. Our next one is the big 4-0. Can you believe that? Wow. And you're not talking about age because we still have a while before we're the big 4-0. You're talking oh, yeah, about yeah, we got the- many. We got many months until we reach the big 4 <laughs> Many, many months. Uh, do you want to know what else we have many, many of? What is that? Great topics that we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, very excited to be able to get into it. Guys, don't forget, we are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. And we are live on Twitch, and uh, there's actually one person on Twitch right now watching, so that's super awesome. This is meant to be interactive. Yeah, meant to be interactive, so please, 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 please uh, throw your questions in the chat. We definitely want to be interacting with you guys throughout this podcast and all of them. Um, Make sure you stay tuned. After the normal podcast ends, we're going to go dark for a minute. And then we're going to be jumping right into dinking around with Eddie and Webby. And you, yes, you could be live on the show, right? Yeah, it's a super fun time. I love doing the dinking around with Eddie and Webby show. We never know what's going to happen. It's totally unplanned. So like Eddie said, you could be our guest if you want to join us. So stay tuned for that. Yes. It's, it's a fun time. I really like it a lot. And it's a, it's a real good time. It's a real good time. I agree with you. Definitely enjoy it. Um, again, we have a good show for you. We have a guest. This is actually the first time that we've gone live where the guest uh, isn't with us just yet. He just frantically called me and said he's on his way home. So we're just going to keep rolling with things. And as soon as he's ready, boom, we're going we're gonna to bring him on. So I'm excited no, about that's that. Just, it, it's, that's the beauty of live <laughs> broadcasting. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, we thought we were going to have a guest. We currently do not have a guest. So right. thanks, Matt. Thanks for that, yep. for keeping us on our toes. But I'm I'm confident Matt will be here eventually. <laughs> I, you know what? All I hope is that it's a good story that he can share. That'll be fun. So. Right. Better be um, a damn good reason that he uh, didn't show up on time. That's right. <laughs> we have some good content to get to before Matt comes on, though. Uh, but before we get into any of that, Webby, what's going on in Twitter? Oh, man. Twitter has been blowing up like crazy lately. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, Eddie, but Kyle Yates was on the previous episode. episode. Do you remember that? I do remember him being on the previous episode and the episode. (laughs) But yeah, uh, Twitter just blew up like crazy as a result. Uh, I'm going to read a few of our most recent tweets that we got here. Uh, Here's one from Bustin Jeeber. At Eddie and Webby, I don't know how you guys possibly managed to get Kyle Yates on your show, but that was friggin' awesome. Nice. I agree. That was friggin' awesome. Yeah, totally agree. Um, That was great having him on. You know, not only is he a fantastic pickleball player, one of the best out there, um, he's just an all-around good guy, and I think that came through on our our show with him. So that was cool. Oh, absolutely. That was a great time. Um, Let's do another Twitter comment. Here's one from Team Glenny for Life. Wow, did you guys really go from a pickleball legend like Kyle Yates to a comedian wannabe like Matt Loria? <laughs> P.S. We miss Glenn. <laughs> Ooh, burn. Oh, man. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't very nice. You know what? That name sounds familiar. Team Glennie for life. I think they've actually messaged us 
in the past, and uh, they mentioned missing Glenn. Uh, for those old school fans, Glenn was our very first ever co-host, and uh, Matt Loria and Glenn actually had a, a little bit of a feud. They had some beef. They had some beef going on. They did. Where's the beef? Right here on this show with Matt and Glenn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, let's do uh, let's do one more Twitter comment. Here's one from Steve Dobbs. Eddie and Webby, whatever happened to the moment of tech segment? I really enjoyed it and thought it was supposed to be a regular segment, but you only did it once. What gives? Uh, yeah, what gives? A, 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 that's a great question. Um, it was very fun doing the moment of tech. It was a very successful thing. And uh, it's kind of funny that he brings it up now because I'd like to announce that the moment of tech is back. Uh, not not on this episode, though. It's not going to be back on this episode, but it will be back very soon. You just got to stay tuned. You, we never know when the moment of tech will show up. So stay tuned and it will be back. It will. All right. But, uh, All right. Yeah. But that's, that's, uh, that's going to do it for Twitter for today. Well, that was good stuff on Twitter. I'm kind of bummed Matt wasn't here to hear Team Clanny for Life's comments, but we'll make sure to bring it up when he's, when he's on for sure. Um, cool. What, you know, speaking of segments, you talked about the moment of tech. There's actually uh, a new segment that we're going to introduce to this podcast, right? We're going to see what you guys think of it. Um, one of the things that we've gotten feedback on is that our podcast is missing maybe some pickleball tips. Uh, some of you guys actually said, hey, I would be awesome if we could actually, you know, hear about ways to improve our game a little bit. And so I'm sure you guys, every one of you follow our YouTube channel. You guys probably also follow our friend Tony with Into Pickle, his YouTube channel as well. And you've noticed that we started making some videos together. And really, uh, Tony is just a great instructor, awesome guy. He just loves, you know, helping people with the game of pickleball. Uh, and I'm lucky enough to to have him be helping me right now. So his uh, his theory is that he can take any hack off the street with with like a mild ability to swing the paddle and turn them into a 4.0 player. So what a better hack than this guy, Eddie, right here. Right. Boy, does he have a challenge working with somebody <laughs> like you. Jeez. That's right. No. <laughs> um, but one thing we want to do is, you know, we want to drop little segments. So this is actually the first video in what might end up becoming a series of videos. And I'm just going to go ahead and roll it. Hey guys, super excited to be able to bring you a new segment to our podcast where we're going to be going into a lot of awesome pickleball tips with our good buddy Tony here from Into Pickle. Tony, can you kind of give us a, a breakdown as to kind of why you started Into Pickle? Uh, yeah, sure. Being on plays ready. My wife Jill and I uh, started playing pickleball about three and a half years ago. Uh, we both were tennis players. Uh, I had been playing tennis for, you know, since I was like five or six years old. And um, I've always been... Um, Curious about the sport, not just curious, but a student of the sport. Uh, always felt like I wanted to help folks when I was playing with them. And last summer, uh, my wife and I were being the summers, and we were up, uh, I think we were up in Maine at the time. Uh, there was an IPTPA certification in Massachusetts. Uh, I went down there and had the good fortune of, you know, completing the certification while I was there. And um, then we decided to launch into Pickle. And the idea was, um, you know, there, there's some really good material out there on the Internet um, for people who want to learn how to play pickleball. That's how I learned how to play pickleball and Jill learned how to play pickleball. Uh, so there's some really good material, but there's also, some, there's also some areas that I think some other material would be helpful. Well, Tony's been nice enough to be able to take some of my videos and actually give me some pretty amazing tips that hopefully through him working with me on it, you guys can actually learn a few things as well. And uh, I know that the first thing that you kind of noticed was that I can improve my foundation a little bit. First of all, I want to thank you for working with us, agreeing to work with us on this. The video you sent us was excellent quality. Thanks for sending that over. We we're able to see it real clearly. But yeah, one of the things we saw in there was uh, you had excellent footwork getting to the ball. You do a really good job of that. Uh, where we saw a little bit of a glitch was your left leg. You lifted it when you hit the ball uh, in the video. And so that's something that you need to work on because of the foundational issues it creates in the shot. Yeah, I noticed that I have a tendency that when I'm going for the drop shot, it's kind of like my okay, I got to lift that leg to, you know, to get my body in position to be able to drop it. What's kind of like a recommendation then that you would give to help someone like in my position where you might be losing your, your good solid foundation when you're going for that shot? Sometimes what we try and do is we overthink the shot. If you just trust the shot, you know, you trust the paddle and trust the, the, the physics of the shot, the shot will work. 
So what you're doing with your leg, I think, is you're trying to kind of soften up your body by lifting the leg and maybe, again, getting into a, like a softer, almost like a, like a martial arts posture where you're like, you know, real soft or Aikido posture. And then you get soft and you hit the ball. If you just trust that the mechanics will work repeatedly, you can have a more repeatable, con uh, consistent shot. I think the easy thing to do is to focus on your shoulder. You're a right-handed player. So you're, we're going to focus on your non-dominant shoulder, which for you is your left shoulder. Uh, and basically, we're going to tell you to keep that shoulder engaged in the, in the shot or engaged in what you're doing. And then what happens is you, you, by definition, won't be able to lift your foot up if you keep that shoulder engaged in the shot. So that's, that, that was our advice to you in terms of how to fix the foot lift. Yeah, I can definitely see that helping. I feel like that's going to help me to naturally put my body into the position to where my feet are going to plant a solid foundation to really help with a lot of those third shots. But it also helped with your balance entirely. So it'll help with things like, you know, you know, some players that kind of lift their head so they're hitting a serve, for instance. So they go to serve, and as they're making contact or before they make contact, they're coming out of the shot and lifting their head, which, what does that do? It, the shoulder comes back. So if I keep the shoulder in, I keep my head in, in alignment with my shot, uh, I keep my feet on the ground, and I have a better solid base uh, to operate from. That's definitely great advice that I feel like I could put into action right away. And I'm sure there's a lot of viewers and listeners out there that, might be struggling with just that same thing. And what I'd recommend is, uh, is uh, you know, if they go to the YouTube channel, the, the Into Pickle YouTube channel, and uh, we already did a video on the non-dominant shoulder, and they can also watch the full video where we did the analysis of your stroke, uh, and they can see if that's something that affects their game, their foundation, they have foundational issues, uh, they can watch that. And they can also watch, and that frankly, they can also watch how well you move to the ball. So your footwork to get to the ball is excellent, and then we'll just make sure we keep that foot down, keep that shoulder engaged, and execute a better shot. Well, thank you very much for that, Tony. We hope to get a lot more of these coming to you guys here in the very near future. If people want to check out all the great stuff that you guys are doing at Into Pickle, uh, what do you recommend? Most of our content's on YouTube. Uh, we also have a website, so it's everything's Into Pickle. So Facebook, website, YouTube, it's all in the number two pickle. And if they ever want to reach out to me, I'm accessible at, uh, it's Tony, my name, uh, at intopickle.com. Well, thank you very much, Tony. We definitely appreciate it. Thanks, Eddie. Well, there you go. There was our, our nice. first segment, our first uh, pickleball tip segment. We got to name it. We have to have a clever name for it because pickleball tips just isn't cutting it for the, for the quality of content you're going to get from that. Pickle tips <laughs> with Eddie and Tony. <laughs> That's right. We give you the pickle tip and just the tip. Yep. Today, we're going to show our pickle tips. <laughs> <laughs> we need to save that talk for dinking oh, around. Yeah, yeah. Wrong show. Um, I need to save that for the post show when it's uh, <laughs> uncensored. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, uh, our guest made it, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and intro our guest here real quick. Uh, our guest tonight, he has been on our show before, and tonight will be the third time he's on the show. He might be a little bit of a hothead on the pickleball courts, but he's an all-around good guy off the courts. He knows his craft beer and hip-hop, so protect your neck when we bring on our good friend, Matt Loria. What's going on, man? Yeah, what up, man? <laughs> what an intro. My <laughs> God, thank you. Can you can you open for me on the road here? I like it. Anytime, man. I'm happy man. to. I apologize well, for my tardiness, guys. I was, uh, I was totally on uh, Eddie and Webby time here where I was getting a snack. <laughs> started into two snacks and then three refreshments and then all of that but i am here i have a barking dog because i just arrived home and uh i'm ready to get into it boys i, I saw the twitter comment i was frantically driving through traffic watching <laughs> on my bluetooth and watching the twitter comment and that that uh twitter comment is exactly right my god you guys reached a point in the podcast where you guys are getting the biggest in the sport from uh, Maggie Ramisi, Kenny Ben Johns to uh, Cassandra Gerke and Kyle Yates. And now we're right down to four <laughs> with the guest okay. here. So, Thanks, man. This is nice. uh, going to have all, all of the seven viewers be like, who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for anybody that isn't aware uh, or isn't familiar with who Matt is, he's been a great friend of the show since the early days of the podcast. Uh, he co-hosted with us on episode 23. He was a full-blown host uh, when he filled in for me on episode 27. 
And uh, one kind of funny thing about Matt, like I, I feel like I've, I've considered you a good friend of mine for quite a while now, quite a while now. But I actually didn't even meet you in person until just a few months ago when we did the uh, the Midwest Indoor Winter Championships tournament in uh, in Grand Rapids. Yeah, it, it's felt it's great, dude, to meet you guys electronically and then uh, meet you in person and be like, I kind of like you guys electronically a little bit better. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I that's what I always feel like. I always feel like yeah. people like think we're we're cool and funny and stuff, and then they meet us in person and they're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like these guys. Yeah. But, uh, I think yeah, I'm, you guys I'm happy are that I can downplay it here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely happy that I can finally put a physical body um, to the virtual face and voice of Matt Loria. <laughs> that is what all the girls say to me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> ah. Well, we got a lot of good stuff to be able to jump into today. We're going to talk U.S. Open. We're going to talk about some stuff coming up. Uh, but what we like to do is kind of loosen up a little bit, get our guests uh, to loosen up. And what a better way to do that than uh, by cracking open a beer. Um, Webby, why don't you start by sharing with us the beer that you're going to be drinking tonight? Ah, uh, Yes, I am very excited to drink this beer and I actually have Matt to thank for me even ever tasting this beer before. And that beer in question is Zombie Dust from Three Floyds Brewing. I got to tell you, Matt, uh, Matt sent us some of this a while back. We drank it on the show. And this has become one of, one of my top favorite IPAs. I absolutely love it. Um, one thing that I hate, though, is that it is not distributed to Michigan, where I live. Um, but luckily, I went to Chicago a few weeks ago, and they had this there, and I picked up a couple of cases, and that is what I will be drinking. Nice. It's a good one. Very good beer. Uh, Matt, what, uh, what beer are you going to be drinking here tonight? I am also on uh, Team uh, Webby here, where I'm a little annoyed because the beer that I'm drinking here tonight is uh, only distributed, I think, in Ohio. And a couple of other places, actually. Um, this is from uh, Fatheads Brewery. Um, I, it's uh, I, Where I had to get it was actually just outside of Cleveland for work. And uh, it's called Benjamin Danklin. So it is an eye from Fatheads called Benjamin Danklin. I think the name kind of almost sounds like pickleball-ish. Like, you know, I feel like somebody would be like, Benjamin Danklin. And Grandmaster Loria, you're on court 11 versus Sir Dinkenstein and Mr. Oh No Bill, you know? So, Benjamin Danklin, you're on court 11. Oh, that's awesome, man. Where where'd you say that was from? Ohio. I believe it's from oh. um, just outside of Akron. Oh, Middleborough Heights, Ohio. So, one of the uh, Cleveland area towns. So. All right. Nice, man. Um, well, Webby, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that you were turned on to your beer from Matt when he sent it. Uh, the beer that I'm going to be drinking tonight actually is one that Matt brought down with him to give to me when he came down for the U.S. Open, and that is the Waldo's Special Ale from Lagunitas. And this bad boy has been in my fridge since Matt was here um, God, two and a half weeks ago, and uh, I've been I've been wanting to uh, to drink this one bad. Um, I don't know much about it, but what really turned me on is that I went to Western Michigan University, and we used to always hang out Thursday nights at our favorite bar, Waldo's. It was the Campus Tavern, and they used to have five dollar pitchers of mixed drinks. So I used to go there, and one five dollar pitcher of gin and tonic, you were doing good. Two pitchers. Blackout night, but hey, for five ten bucks to have a good night, it was always well worth it. Exactly. Did you ever hang out at at well, Waldo's, I, Matt, when you went there? I did. I part of the uh, um, I don't know, like rite of passage where, where you had to go there and um, have the you know, I was only twenty one hanging out there, and somehow that was the worst hangover of my lifetime. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, at twenty one, where you're drinking. The shittiest call. <laughs> you have a, a PS, you know, Scott Golden on your guys' podcast talked about um, all the time he gets questions on how, how to get sponsored. How do I get sponsored as a pickleball player? How you get on the Eddie and Webby podcast is keep sending a beer. 
You're going to be on there three times. That's right. Four times. <laughs> just send them beer that they have been on the podcast three times. And you can be late. You can be late to the podcast. They don't even care. So. <laughs> yeah, we don't care. You can show up whenever you want. We're good with that. <laughs> That's it. awesome. But I do got to tell you, Matt, I, I am out of beer that you've sent us. So if you want to be on the show again, I'm going to have to get uh, some more in my collection. So this could be your last appearance ever on the show, unless you rectify that. Just saying. Uh, that's all I've been doing. That's all I've been doing is just getting <laughs> beer for the podcast here. So, <laughs> Well, Matt also showed up with another beer, too, that I'm I'm cellaring. It's, uh, uh, that was that was an uh, Imperial Stout, barrel-aged stout. So I'm, ready to, I'm excited to drink that in a year. So maybe next year around Christmas might be a good time to break that one out. Yeah. Yep. Um, we have a ton of good stuff to to get into with you, Matt. Um, but the last time you were on the show, I think, was back in November. And it's unbelievable to me the amount of changes that – or the amount of things that have happened since then. Um, Webby, I know you've, you've won a couple pickleball medals, right? I have. In fact, you might be able to see them back there. I've got a, a – Pretty good number of medals hanging there. A couple new ones, a couple of gold medals that uh, I didn't have last Woo! time that uh, that you were on. So I'm very proud of that. Yeah. Uh, I don't have mine displaying behind me, but I've picked up uh, a couple medals as well. Uh, but there's really like one main award that we got since November that personally for me is it's up there for like one of the top things we've ever had. Oh, for sure. And uh, for anybody uh, that didn't get a chance to watch the most recent Grammy Awards ceremony, um, I think we'll just let this video speak for itself and roll it. And the Grammy goes to Eddie and Webby, the pickleball anthem. Let me tell you about this game. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, that's, that's all I can say is, wow. I cannot believe this just happened. This is, uh, this is a dream come true. I mean, this is incredible. Yeah, absolutely, man. We got to thank all the fans out there. So many people to thank. I got to give a lot of thanks to the big guy upstairs. You know, Rick in Unit 302 lives above me. He's been a huge motivation for hip hop and pickleball for me. But thank you to all you guys out there. And I just want to say, this, this just goes to show, if you're passionate about anything in life and you get the urge to write a rap song about it, just do it. I mean, just, just write a rap song, make a rap video, and who knows what can happen. I mean, that's what we did, and we, we just got a Grammy because we did it. I mean, wow, this is amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all the supporters and all the fans out there. We cannot thank you enough. And uh, we just got one thing left to say. Pickleball. What? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Coming up next, Ed Sheeran, Kelsey Ballerini. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah. What a night. What a night for you guys, man. Congratulations. Thank yeah, you. A night I will never forget. And here it is right here. I yep. still sleep with this every night. <laughs> it was one of my proudest moments ever. And I'll never forget it. Yeah, I got that right there, baby. I got that one on display. Um, well, Matt, I mean, you know, since November, what's been going on with you? Oh, you know, just all types of uh, joints and jams, as the Black Eyed Peas would say. Um, gosh, trying to think here. I've met you guys in person since November. So that's probably weird. Um Outside of that, man, it's just been, a, I've, I live in Michigan. Um, I don't have any kids, so I've tried to avoid winter as much as possible <laughs> by getting the hell away from Michigan, which has been very enjoyable. And then, uh, yeah, man, just uh, trying, to look like, uh, trying to look like Eddie here with my backwards hat on a podcast here. I'm just missing the sunglasses at this point. So Nice. Yeah, it's been cool to finally get a chance to meet you in person. It is weird how... You know, you hang out with somebody on a podcast, even though you're a thousand miles away. Uh, and then it's like, you meet each other. It's like, cool. So everything's the same. It's all good. Um, so I got something. Guys, that... man. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'm going to read a couple of comments that we got on social media here. There's one on the pickleball forum from a Mr. Scott Lippitz, the infamous 
Scott Lippitz, and he Ooh. says, so who is he? So who? what would you say, Matt? What would you tell people that want to know who Matt Loria is? What What would you say? Oh, man. <laughs> what hip-hop lyric do I from? Uh, funky, fresh, dressed to impress, and ready to party is probably what I can give myself. That's Missy Elliott, if I'm giving credit to it. Um, I am uh, an annoying pickleball player that is weirdly passionately obsessed. Um, one of the louder people out there in the pickleball landscape. If you see me at anything from a uh, U.S. Open to a Beer City Open, I am a guy that usually picks out 90s uh, pop culture references for jerseys to play in. Um, I am part of ilovepickles.org. And gosh, I don't know, a friend to all the pickleball community, comedian, uh, savant, and pickle maven. How's that, Scott? <laughs> nice. Yeah, Scott. I, I think that is the question the, is that anyway. Yeah, that, that, that's by far the best self description that anybody has had on our podcast. So yeah, thank you I, for that. Yeah. Do I get the job? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> You're hired. You're hired. He's not, he's not wrong, though, man. I mean, it's like, again, from Ben Johns to Kyle Yerke to now just, hey, Matt. <laughs> like, I love it. So. <laughs> nice. Um, all right, man. Well, why don't we do this here? Um, let's talk about the U.S. Open a little bit. And so, you know, Matt, you came down for, for the – God, you were here for what? seven eight days of it pretty much the entire time um but we, and we wanted to have you on obviously because you're a friend of the show you have, you got you know some great great stories about comedy and pickleball but at the same time you're actually uh great for this conversation because you were at the us open last year and this year so not only can we talk about this year a little bit but we can talk about maybe some of the things some of the differences that you've noticed or whatnot between last year and this year um and everybody out there in Facebook land, YouTube land, if you guys have any questions or comments about the 2019 U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, feel free to uh, to throw them in the chat as well, because we definitely want to make this conversational. So what did you think of this year's U.S. Open? It's hard to top. And, and I mean, again, I don't, I'm, I'm not a pro. I don't travel to, you know, all the quote unquote grand slams for, Pickleball, but it is just, I think the way that they described it to me when I talked to the U.S. Open directors, they said, uh, it's a party where a pickleball tournament broke out. And I really think that that's an accurate description, just in the fact that there's so much fun around the tournament that it, it really is, even just as a spectator that maybe not even know what the heck the sport is, is Matt, you're really going to see it at its, uh, not only at the sheer highest level of talent and performance but also you're gonna have a blast um my girlfriend comes down for half the week just to hang out and obviously you know see the tournament everything support me but also it's fun for her and i know uh you know eddie your wife came down and just got to come out and hang out as well too so the fun of it is just really second to none for me and you know being from the midwest i would get down there during the month april slash may it kind of is almost like the peace out to winter because right. we're like, okay, okay, I'm going down to 85 and all this. In addition to when I, it's, but it from 2018 to 2019, I mean, it felt like a what would that be? The fourth year, so a 4.0 of it, yeah. you know, like the version one from all of it to now this year. I mean, even from just noticing from last year to this year, it just felt bigger, it felt vaster, and it felt quicker. Because there's more people getting involved. I think that's the cool thing about the U.S. Open is that, you know, we don't know who the 2020 U.S. Open doubles team or singles player that we're going to discover next year to be like, holy shit, where were they a year ago? Because there's so there's so much hopefully flooding into the sport that you start to be able to be like, okay, I, I never knew who Trinity was last year. And now her first U.S. Open, she's unbelievable from it all so it's i don't know i mean i could ramble about it on and on and on as you can see here i even have this sitting on my coffee table yeah. right now because that's that's how much i love it but it is uh it's my favorite in terms i call it the uh comic-con for pickleball <laughs> like if it were 
And there's plenty of offshoots of Comic Cons. Like every city USA has the, you know, from whatever city Comic Con is but San Diego is the big one from what I understand that's the huge one yeah. that's where everybody goes to but that is the huge I feel like for our sport and that I've never been to nationals so I can't speak to it but just from coming from last year to this year it's pretty fun to be able to sit there and say that this is its favorite week in April slash May yeah I, I didn't know what to expect I mean it's crazy that I've lived down here for almost five years now but honestly, I was just getting serious into pickleball last year, right at the time of the U.S. Open. And so I, I knew some neighbors and friends that were there, and they told me how great it was. But I had really high expectations of it. And I got to tell you, I was absolutely blown away by it. Um, let's, let's talk about a, a few statistics from this year. 2,161 players from 48 U.S. states and 15 countries. I mean, think about that. 2,000 players. Uh, the youngest player, which I thought was awesome, is just 10 years old. And the oldest player, uh, 86 years old. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's what's great about this sport, right? And, you know, so you have young, you have old. But what I thought was great was 58% male, 42% female. So this isn't just a, a total like dominated sport like it you know it's men like 58 and 42 i think i think that's that's a, a a good representation of this sport and it just shows you that all ages men or men or women it, th this is a sport for you and i think these stats are showing that and uh, out, of, out of all these people 4345 matches were played at the open that's crazy wow yeah that's what I always noticed too, as I was finding the fun statistics from the first year to the fourth year, just how much more they're adding, adding, yeah. adding, like, you know, and it's, I think, I don't know if I'm correct on this, but I think it's the most amount of matches that have ever been run in a tournament history for the 2019 U S open. So, yeah. I'm, I, I don't doubt it, man. Incredible. Yeah. It's, it's just fun too, to be able to tell people like I, what I get a lot because I'm not, you know, some of the pros that you guys have had on the past, you get to see people that you know, they don't even know what the hell pickleball is. <laughs> and they go, were you down there just watching or were you down there competing as well too? And I don't know how to put into words because when they hear us open, they think tennis, they think golf and they think I'm down there competing. They're like, Oh, you're down there competing. You're like, yeah. And so they think I'm up there <laughs> <laughs> the heart in my ego to tell them that like, Hey man, you can be, you know, 87 and competing at whatever level you determine. <laughs> but the beauty of it is that that's it. You can compete at any level, any skill set. Granted, it's a little bit harder and you have to, like, you're trying to buy Lady Gaga tickets for a venue right immediately when they go on sale at 10 a.m. in order to get registered for every <laughs> event that you want to get registered in. Right. But – with that, it really does make it cool because you can compete. You get to be able to have that um, competition, uh, I guess, facet of your life stroke. But then also you get to see a sport that you love so much played at the highest level that you just go, are we even playing the same sport? So it's, <laughs> right. it's great. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, Webby, what's, uh, what's going on in the socials? Yeah, we got some great comments here. Uh, Steve Peranto is actually tuning in. He's one of the Pickleball greats, uh, also a fellow podcaster. He says, hey, guys, watching your show before I have Enrique on my show tonight. So that's very cool. Thanks for tuning in, Steve. Nice. And uh, John Davison, we all remember John Davison. Um, he had some great questions for Kyle when Kyle was on. Uh, he actually said in regards to what we were talking about earlier with the, the video you showed with the Pickleball tips, he said, I'll give pickleball tips, but we would have to charge everyone at least $10 to tune in. So that's pretty interesting there. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like that and, per diem. Uh, man. Those are going to be some amazing tips. Yeah. <laughs> 10 bucks a, and, that, uh, yeah, 10 bucks a show. That would be pretty good. Right. <laughs> uh, Tom Miller is tuning in. He said, thanks for getting the priceless cargo to the airport so I could continue playing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom was in the in the middle of uh, of his tournament on Friday, and uh, Nicole needed to get to the airport. So I had a good time good time running her up to uh, Punta Gorda. It was fun. 
And by running, a gentleman yeah. in a scholar, not not only driving, you know, one of his friends' wives to the airport, but his mixed doubles partner. Yeah. To the, you know, that's that's a true, true friend. Uh, you mean the mixed doubles partner that uh, beat Webby and your girlfriend for Eddie don't, Webby two point five? Is that right? Here, right now. She, she's right <laughs> over here. I'll, I'll get her on the podcast. Oh, and talk trash. Don't worry. Uh, Yes. Uh, we should have won. We really should have won that match. I, I, every time I watch that video, I cringe because like we were just we were so close. We were so close to beating Eddie and Nicole. Oh man, I still have nightmares about it. But no, it was super fun. It was like it was such a great matchup, especially that first game. That first game just went back and forth. Mm -hmm. It was crazy, super fun. Oh yeah, good I'm times. I got some breaking hardcore stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I got some breaking news here. Uh, Tyson McGuffin is actually tuning in right now. And uh, Tom Miller said, Tyson, thanks for getting it done in singles so I could take some more of Shane's money. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. T Love Tyson, you'll, you'll be happy to hear that I took some of uh, Eddie's money too, betting on you, man. So I appreciate nice. it, Tyson. Yeah, I think I, I, I think... got some IPAs waiting for you at Beer City Open, dude. Nice. And uh, Eddie, I don't know about you. I feel like now might be a good time to to do some breaking news about next week's episode. What do you think? Or should we keep it a secret? What do you think? Um, let's keep it a secret for a little longer. All right, stay tuned yeah. and to, stay tuned for the breaking news. But before you guys get back to your U.S. Open discussion, I do want to show something uh, that a good buddy of mine gave me as a gift. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able. To be there this year down there at the u.s open i was up here in lovely michigan um but i did get this very nice t-shirt from my buddy george cook check this out there we go oh US nice open. there you go all right very nice shirt thank you george thank you for that nice where did he get so that I feel, from i feel like i was there i feel like i was there with you guys now yeah you were there where did you get that shirt from? That doesn't look like the uh, official uh, U.S. Open logo and everything. That's a, that's like a new look. I like that. Yeah, I like the look, the look of the shirt a lot. Uh, who knows? Maybe it was one of those shirts that you can buy like on the corner or something. Somebody's selling out of their trunk. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> a dude that is a screen printer and it's like, hey, do you have a medium? And they're like, no, we only got XLs. You know, like whatever, whatever it fits, dude. Right. It's $5. And you're like, do you have Venmo? And they're like, uh-huh. No. We Ven cash. what? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's solid. I like that shirt though, man. That's nice. That's dope. Yeah. Um. All right. Why don't we jump back into Poor, U.S. Open here? Talk here a little bit. Webby, dude. He's U.S. Open, and we're down here. Great. Office. We're like, what the hell is that shirt, man? You weren't yeah. there. Where's that from? That's not the official logo. Get out of here with that shirt. Right. Where did right. you get that from? I, the, the one, the one thing I have to contribute to this U.S. <laughs> Open discussion, and you guys just crap all over it. So whatever. <laughs> Go ahead. Talk about talk about the stupid U.S. Open. Yeah. Just get back to Facebook and shut your mouth, Webby. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. All right. We're, oh, that's right. We were talking about the U.S. Open. Uh, Matt, for some reason, when you come Ooh. on, dude, we get easily distracted. I don't know what that's all about, but. I am, I am ADHD at its finest, folks. Nice. So you, you talked a little bit how people were asking you, like, oh, you go down there and you compete and you try and explain it and it's tough. Um but you did play four days there, right? Yeah. I played every day but mixed age. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that, that was really – that's the best part. I mean, personally, just if I'm going to go down there and, you know, spend a week down there, I really want to at least, you know, compete the majority of days that I can. So, really great to be able to get into all the events that I got into and then to be able to do it all. And, um I got to say, from a Midwestern perspective, I think I got to play twice outside before getting there. <laughs> and so heat is one thing. That's fine. You can adjust to that. That sucks because it's one thing. But what you, I feel like you can't really adjust to as a Midwesterner off the bat is just the wind. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it's an excuse on my behalf, but it is like you, you're just not used to it. It's a total different game. And what I mean by that is I just got to – like strong sense that when the wind becomes a factor, 
I can't grip the paddle tighter just because it's something that plays along with it, or I can't just think about the wind so much. You just got to keep the ball on the court and just keep it in play and stuff and rather than worry about it. But it is something, man. I think next year I might have to come in a whole 24 hour, 36 hours earlier and uh, <laughs> play me a couple more days in the wind. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's worth it in every sense. Though. I'll take the wind and the sun over the uh, abysmal snow in late April in Michigan. I'll yeah. go 0 and 2 at the U S open to not have to do with Michigan weather in April. So. Yeah, I totally agree. Especially cause April teases a few of those nice days and you're like, yes, we made it. And then a week later, a snowstorm comes through. Exactly. Yeah. So, so you got down here Saturday and it was like you land, you're here and then boom, 8 AM Sunday morning, you're out on the courts with the heat that you're not used to with the wind that you're not used to competing in singles like talk about that was that just a complete shock to your system or like what what was that how, how was that whole experience it was so quick i didn't even feel like it i mean it's just like let's we're just let's go let's play pickleball which was kind of good in that sense um i i really enjoyed it i mean it really got personal you know somebody that has to play cash money in order to or house money rather playing singles just because I don't play it that often. So it was more of just like adjust to the weather more than anything else. So I'll take a one in two on the day just to adjust to the weather and get some shots in and uh, shake out some of the IPAs from the night before. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Eddie. But in addition to that, it was great just to be able to get to the point to be able to say like, you're out there and you're competing. And I think one of the things that I noticed more is I feel like singles maybe two years ago or three years ago used to just be a little bit more of like a uh yeah it's fun to play it's, it's a fun addition it's fun to that uh, and maybe this is just from my perspective but i feel like singles is really this year like taken at a higher higher level and it was so much fun to see so many people that maybe wouldn't play singles uh, that i've seen in years past even at the pro level like that of you know weinbach playing senior men's singles and stuff it was just cool to see more people playing singles and just i mean i can you can thank the pros like the tight watching and the kyles and the bens and you know the christine mcgraths and the irenas and obviously the simonis for having a big emphasis on singles and stuff and it really i think makes the game better and then even for just like the most layman person that doesn't understand uh pickleball or doesn't ever seen it I feel like they can adapt to singles quicker just watching it from a scoring perspective and what happens than that of, okay, first server, but it's the first server in the start of the game, and then it's two server. You know, it's it feels like a like like your guys' rap song says. There's not <laughs> enough time to explain. So Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It was really cool to see that. Not that. Last year I didn't come to singles day, and I'm kicking myself that I never did it. So I will always come to – Singles day championship court to watch all the singles, um, you know, quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. So, yeah, I gotta tell you, man, like I, I rarely get to play singles, and down here, I just, I, a lot of people I play with, nobody ever wants to play singles, so I kind of got away with it. But after watching not even the pro matches from singles day at the U.S. Open, but even some of the four o four five level matches, some of the matches you were playing in, Matt it got me really pumped up to see. And, and now I kind of got a little bit of a, of a fire under me to be able to start playing singles. Yeah. I, I, I think there was always this, um, this, I don't want to say myth out there before of, um, singles is singles and doubles is doubles. But what I'm finding is the ground strokes that I'm working on when I'm playing singles, the cardio that I'm working on, uh, all of those things help with the doubles game as well. And I've started to notice over the last year that a lot of these singles matches are bringing both players up to the net a little bit more and kind of having the the dinking cat and mouse game going on a little bit. So I think that we're starting to see some of the strategy that we've seen in doubles over the last you know five years start to work its way into singles as well, which is really exciting for me. I couldn't agree more. Really, just even from a perspective, I used to think that ignorantly – Again, I think just because of the skill set that I'm at, but I used to think that singles affected my doubles play. Like I was just going to start to try and hit winners all the time. But realistically, what it's made me 
do is hit more shot drives and mm-hmm. be able to hit like more passing shots and where I think of that and just have more of a, um, I don't know, a catalog of shots that I'm able to do opposed to just being able to go up there and go, well, this is when you hit the third shot drop. Right. This is when you go to the, and then, you know, it's not as much segmented like that. And that's what I love about, you know, 2018, 2019 pickleball is that it's like, there's no, I mean, sure there's a traditions and stuff, but then you have other people that are just breaking the mold from all of it. And I, I think you can thank singles a lot for that. And that's something I, again, thought, you know, two years ago that I thought I did. I mean, when I started playing pickleball, that's all I want to do is play singles. But now it's like, you're right. Not many people want to do it. So you start to mm-hmm. shift away, but now I'm more, more, more forward to singles than most, but it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm definitely going to start doing that more. Um, all right. So moving away from singles, you competed next in men's age doubles, where men's doubles age, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. That might as well be called give it a shot as a 4 0. Like, hey, give it a shot. There you go. Let's see what the draw brings you. So it was. it's fun because. The way I always look at it is that you get to compete against the best in the game. You have the chance of playing against the pros and all that. We got matched up off the bat against uh, – uh, they're not pros, but I think they're five O's, and we got, you know, we got 2 11 and 4 11 So we knew that we were in over our head. Even on, even on our best day, I don't think we beat them. But then we won the next one, and then uh, we lost in the third one, but we lost, you know, 11-15. We're happy the way that we played. And again, it was me and my men's doubles partner to compete on Wednesday. So you're excited to just get out there and compete together, learn on what you learned. And, you know, essentially, man, get that win down. That's really what the whole week was for me. Play in the win, learn the win, not grip it. And, you know, that's the thing for a lot of it is just doing that, getting to understanding, getting a feel for all of it. So even at, yeah. you know, a 4 0 level competing against 5 0 and what essentially works out to be six O's as pros, it's just nice to just and get a feel for it all. And God, it's it's cool as hell to say that you got, you know, in 2018 I got beat by Jeff Warnick, 111 right. and 211, and you're like, all right, let's go for three points. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I I totally agree, and that's that's one of the things I love about age is that you do see upsets, right? I don't I don't think we saw a ton of them. Um, this this U.S. Open, but it still is you know is cool because you will see those upsets. You will get a chance to be able to play against players that you normally wouldn't, uh, and that's the great thing about age is that it, it it gives you that chance to be able to get in there, especially if they're allowing people four zero and above to be able to get into it, right? Yep, that's it. And I mean, it's it's great. You know, that, that's part of what makes the sport awesome. Make the age, and you know, and your, your average pickleball tournament. Um, you know, this even the tier two style, you're not going to get the chance to get to, get to play against, you know, Tyson McGuffin, Morgan Evans, or uh, Brian Ashworth and Kyle Yates. But you can get that draw and you can say, hey, man, I scored a whole point. Right. Against yeah. one of those guys. <laughs> I got one point on him and I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, that that's how I feel about when Webby and I are going to take on Kyle Yates two versus one. Like if we get one point. <laughs> I'm I'm thrilled. I'm going to be buying drinks that night. Uh, oh yeah, that's a victory. One point and full... we win. Yeah, seriously, man. Like you guys should work on a uh, kid in celebration dance if you guys get one point. So <laughs> <laughs> we could definitely do that. Um. All right. So now you move on and you go to men's skill age doubles, right? Yeah, why don't we why don't we hear about your men's doubles age? Or men, I'm sorry, not men's doubles age, men's doubles skill. So men's doubles age was Monday. I didn't play mixed skill age, but what are, what's happened with yours, man? I want to hear all about yours. I saw it, but I think the podcast needs to hear all about the awesome day that that was. Well, you know, it, it's funny. My 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 men's partner Matthew Gear. He's actually he he's on right now on Facebook. Um, I got to tell you, I had an absolute blast. I mean, I went into it thinking I'm here with all my friends and I'm playing pickleball at the U.S. Open. I win, right? Gold medal. Gold medal for yeah. for something awesome in life. I already won. So I went into it with with very high hopes but little expectations. And I was also playing up. My men's doubles rating is still 
like a 3.29, something like that. And, and I really wanted to challenge myself to be able to play three, five, partially just because I, I enjoy playing against better opponents. I, I find that I play better against better opponents. They're a little bit more predictable. Um, I, I just, I typically play better against them, but I also wanted the challenge. I also wanted to say, my goal is I want to be four Oh, by the end of the year. And I, when I say before, Oh, I mean, benchmark four Oh, where I'm meddling 25% of the time and I'm competing. So I got to, I got to play up, man. I got to do it. And to me, I've always heard at the U S open, a lot of people play down, right? So you're going to have four five or four O's definitely coming down to 3.5, maybe even sometimes four or five. So I'm like, this is gonna be an awesome challenge. Um, and I got to say that I feel totally great about what we were able to do. We, uh, we had a, a ton of fun. We won game one. It did go to three games though. Um, and then the second team we went up against the Bartmans out of, um, I think they were out of, uh, Oklahoma. These guys were awesome. You could tell they play together a lot. They, uh, I believe they were brothers. You can tell that, you know, they, the, their game was just on point with each other. Uh, and they were, they were a much better skill than what me and my partner were able to bring to that game. And when we played them, there was like, like Kale force winds, 40 miles an hour coming across, which I don't think would have changed the outcome of the game, but ultimately, uh, they beat us and, and they really should have, they were definitely the better team, but to put it in perspective, this team also swept every single team that they played against all the way through the gold medal. So they didn't lose one time. Uh, looking at the bracket at all by any team. So they were definitely the dominant team in the bracket and they were obviously the best and, and deserved gold. So couldn't feel too bad about that. Um, For sure. Yeah. I watched that match too. And you guys held your own man that, that win too, like as a spectator, cause I was done for the day. That was like uh welcomed as a spectator, but literally all I was saying to your wife and my girlfriend is like, that has to be a pain in the ass to deal with here right now. So, and those yeah. courts, those one through nine courts, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, maybe it's just because I lost on those, but they, uh, they really have a win that's unlike uh, many of the other courts. Yeah. I think where they are on the property, um, right up against that tree line, but a big open field on the one side of it and the lack of the, um, the windscreens, I think they just, they make it to where it, it definitely can become windy. Um, what, what's funny is, you know, I, I play outdoors all the time. I play at East Naples all the time and I still have a hard time with the wind. Cause it's almost like once you get used to it, boom, you're switching sides. Now you're going to the other side. So before you were able to smash every ball, cause you had the wind at your face. Now you're, you know, you're barely hitting it and it's going three feet out of bounds. And so it definitely, it definitely plays a factor. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So we go down into the loser's bracket or opportunity bracket, as I like to say, we won our first game there. Uh, and then this is actually kind of funny. So this is the last game we played. Unfortunately, we did lose. Uh, but <laughs> I think the score was maybe 12, nine, something like that. We were down a few points and our opponents had a beautiful drop that I go hauling ass to the kitchen line just to be able to try and get back over the net. I didn't make it and I put my hand out because the the post was right in front of me and I busted the post and the the rope that connects the net fell off. It, it was all rusted. There was rust all over the court. And it was basically like a like a 15 minute timeout, which you know, again, I, I don't know whether we would have won the game had we not had that, but I can tell you that that 15 minutes, you know, it was hard to stay loose. It was hard to really stay in the game. And and when we came back, we had to serve. I think I put one into the net and just it kind of, you kind of lost the momentum that you're, you're, you're gaining there. And that was it. We went four games and I couldn't be happier about what we were able to do. You did great. And from an outsider's perspective, man, I was on like a whole set of courts and uh, Cole actually ended up coming over to Nicole Miller and she's like, so they busted the net on that court and all this. And I was like, Oh yeah, cool. You know, I've been down some points and I busted some nets in my time, you know, sarcastically. <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 no. The net went down. And I was like, <laughs> over what? And they're like, no. And they explained, Oh my God, that's almost hilarious. So yeah. that's, I agree with you, man. It's hard to come back from a 15 minute timeout and then just go back to like, it's one thing to have a 15 minute break and then you go into a next match and it's zero, zero. But when the score still exists, it's like, I've had that actually in 2018, the, uh, 
the open got rain delayed for two and a half hours. And then yeah. you go back out in the court and it's, you know, 11, 12 in the opportunity bracket. And it's like, oh, shit, we got we to really press here after two and a half hours of a rain delay. Yeah, it, it can. I mean, it can throw off the momentum. It, it really it just becomes um, challenging overall. So definitely, uh, you know, definitely threw the game off. But like I said, I had a great time. Matthew Gear. Awesome guy to play with. I would definitely play with him again. Uh, he he is he is higher skilled than me. He definitely is higher skilled. But I think that we complemented each other well. I will tell you one more quick thing here. Uh, we we tried stacking, and and I've stacked before a couple times. But game one, we actually lost a point because we did not we we didn't go back to our normal positions when it switched from serving to receiving, and the other team took a point, which they they absolutely should have. We were out of position, and and they took a point, and that was the. First time and hopefully the only time that will ever happen to me. Not I've, fun. We've all been there, man. I've had it yeah. one time where me and my girlfriend are playing together and literally I'm at the net and they're serving it to me. <laughs> like, oh, jeez. What, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, like and you yeah. and almost like laugh at it at that point. But I know what it is, especially when you're at the quote unquote US Open, you're like so like, oh man. And yeah. then the whole rest of the match you're thinking about like what am I what am I doing? So Yeah, it was uh fun, but um any any good stuff coming in on the socials there, Webby? Uh, we got a couple of quick comments here. Uh, Matthew Gear is tuning in, like you said earlier, and he yeah. said, I got to play in the freaking US Open with the legendary Eddie. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> Nice. And uh, Tony from Into Pickle is actually tuning in also, and he said, hi, guys. Say hello to Matt for me. What up, Tony? <laughs> and then uh, I just wanted to bring up something uh, kind of cool. Just personally, uh, I don't think Eddie even knows this, but I recently hired an intern because it's a lot of work doing one of these podcasts. And uh, sometimes you get thirsty and there's not a water nearby. So uh, intern, uh, can you please give me water? Thank you, sir. And there you go. Just like that. I've got water. Yes. To the intern. <laughs> is that, is that skip the intern? You, you, you finally pulled the trigger on him, huh? Yep. Skip the intern. Thank you, <laughs> Skippy. <laughs> nice. I actually, um, I had Glenn the intern, but every time I'd ask for a water, he'd bring me a Bud Light every single time. And I was like, Glenn. <laughs> This is the wrong water. I know what you drink is water, but I want a see-through water, not your uh, hops, corn, water, nothing else but light. <laughs> nice. Dilly dilly. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, there is one thing I want to bring up, though. Something you guys were talking about earlier with the uh, the whole singles game stuff. Um, I would love to be able to play singles, but the few times that I've played, I seriously felt like dying afterwards. Like, have you guys gotten to where it doesn't kill you to play singles? Because I seriously want to die after two games of singles. You want to take that one, Matt? I, uh, that's, that's the only thing I think that I have, like, down in pickleball is I have the, um, Athleticism is the only thing I think I have. <laughs> so all the terrible shots I get away with, I can hopefully make up for in a little bit of movement and stuff. So it's not the dining singles. It's just like I don't know oftentimes what shot to hit next. Like in doubles, I'm like, oh, man, uh, you know, this is where I should do this or I should throw this in or the balls in there. It's like I feel so at like almost ignorant that I'm just like, hit it. You know, like so it's it feels weird to me in the step, but I know what you mean. But you add in Naples heat and that's when it's like, oh, God, this is a whole different game of singles at this point. So. Yeah, like I, I would I would love to play singles because I feel like I've got the speed and like I, I feel like I could do it pretty good. But my cardio just right now, just the thought of it sounds like torture to me, like I, I, like playing more than two games of singles just makes me feel like dying just thinking about it. <laughs> Eddie and Webby four singles full court. Let's do it. Let's go full Let's court. Go. Oh, Let's do it, man. man. You guys I'm, get. I'm down. I accept. I accept, I accept the offer. Per yes. However, yeah. it just can. It cannot be in Florida in the summer. If like maybe <laughs> maybe Florida in the winter, but any like I'll play from like December through February in Florida. Otherwise, it's got to be in Michigan. <laughs> All right. How how about this? We'll we'll do singles, but. 
let's do it outdoors because Eddie and Webby three, the skinny singles. I, I mean, five balls that you hit over my head that if we were playing outdoors would have been 10 feet past the line landed in. And I wanted to throw my freaking paddle against the ground <laughs> and, and stomp on it so many times. So I'll do it and we can do it whenever you want, whatever season, but I want to do it outdoors. How does that sound? All right. I accept. I nice. accept the offer. Yeah. And you're going down. That that belt that you have in the background there of your it's it's not gonna be there for much longer. I just mark my words, it will soon be proudly displayed right around here. I'm the three time. I'm so. the three time. The three time champion. That's me. <laughs> Oh man, it it's it just kills me the fact that you've won those because I, the last two, I definitely should have won. There's no no doubt, no mistaking it. You just you got lucky. They were both flukes. I know it sounds weird to say there's three flukes in a row, but it happened. Just watch the footage, everybody. Watch Eddie versus Webby one through three, and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> yep. All right. Well. Um. Good. I'm glad we got that sorted out. And this is good. This is good. Uh, Facebook comments, guys, keep them coming, because we are gonna we, we are gonna move on from matches a little bit here, and we're gonna talk um, about a couple other topics here. Um, so, so Matt, you you did also compete in um, men's age skill as well, and and you played with your men's partner that you also played men's age with, right? Yep. Yep. He's okay. um, he's my cousin. Um, he's primarily the person I probably played men's with, God, 80%, 90% of the time. Um, incredible tennis background, still plays tennis to this day. Uh, it was so great. I kind of twisted his arm to come down to Naples here this year for the U.S. Open. And uh, he actually, he's a DJ, so he had a record show in New York that he's in order to make it down there for it. And uh, I think because of the call of the U.S. Open and everything that goes along with it, I think skipping record shows in New York for coming years or something leading up to it. So it was actually amazing. We went two and two, not the way that we thought, to be honest, we, we really should have done a hell of a lot better, but man, we gripped too tight. We got too tight in it, but it's a learning thing and just makes us so the rest of the summer, no excuses. Uh, just, uh, just results here at this point. So we got our, uh, debt set here for upcoming. And then, uh, we had a Thursday off, which was fun to actually go away from East Naples Community Park for a whole day. That's awesome. And then uh, Friday played some mixed. Um, it was awesome. Uh, I love the 8 a.m. starts. That's yeah. my biggest. Oh, when you see that on the schedule, it's like, thank God. Because <laughs> you just know that you're going to be able to warm up first and foremost from whatever time you want to till about 8 a.m. So you miss the heat, but with my hairy Sicilian self, like I am sweating from the warm ups. Like <laughs> my mixed doubles partner, she's from Grand Rapids as well. She's like, see everywhere you've been out on the court. Yeah. Driplets. And then by the, it's not even driplets. It's like literally like a super soaker and just went wild on there. But eight. I think our last match started at 4 p.m., I want to say. Um, and we ended up with a bronze medal. So yeah. it was the best possible thing. And I will say my only PSA in this is that it's harder at the U.S. Open to win bronze or any tournament where you can't go through the consolation bracket and make your way back up. It's just hard. I mean, even in that sense, it's harder to win bronze <laughs> just because you're going to have so many more matches. And we were serving – to go to the gold medal match at 10 8 2. And we blew it. And we went down to the consolation bracket. Uh, they beat us. We went down there. We, they beat us fair and square, man. But it was like, it just, just knowing that we had one point away to just the gold medal match and essentially finish our day three hours before we finished it was more, it sounded more appealing than anything else. But that was my only worry from all of it is that I'm going to get my butt kicked from just being exhausted but yeah. thanks to uh eddie on the sideline and all of the greater grand rapids slash michigan slash everyone else my girlfriend andrea who uh your mixed doubles partner she literally from all of that like to the point that i was like like, like dying and then the live stream of her screaming i was like all right, <laughs> this we're in this let's go 
Yeah, that was solid, man. That was so cool to watch those games. So I was there for game one and game two and game three. And that's when I left to go to the airport. This was around like 1230, I would say. And you guys were up. I'm like, cool. They're going to go to gold medal match. We'll be able to watch it as we're, we're driving to the airport and everything. Uh, and then I was like, oh crap. They, uh, they got taken out. Now they're in the, uh, consolation bracket, but I went all the way up to Punta Gorda, which is an hour away, all the way back to my house, showered, changed, had something to eat, came back and still was there with plenty of time to watch your bronze medal match. That's how long you guys were playing for that day. Just to put it in perspective, that was nuts. It was stupid. And the fact too, that was like 103 heat index in those courts and Julianne Smith, I should mention her. She was my mixed doubles partner. She has a hell of a tennis background. She's a hell of a player. She, her and I, I think by the end of it all, we felt like we won the gold medal because we were both damn near, we were hugging after every win, just like in pure, like, oh my God, we made it through another one. Just like the amount of it, just, just from pure exhaustion. And I, I didn't think I'd go through that that much, but I was like trying to find any little bit of the uh, um, windscreen shade that I could find and like kneel into it and just like get my little bit of the shade, get and pour some water over my head. And it, it was incredible, man. I mean, it was at the end of it all. I, I think at this, this is the only, thing, the only time I've ever had Bloody Marys past like 3 p.m. in my life. <laughs> and it was not for essentially like I really am craving a Bloody Mary. It's like I'm really craving a drink, but I also need a ton of sodium for right. doing this. And this probably goes against everything that every <laughs> dehydration specialist would say too. But I'm like, I was having a Bloody Mary at 5, 10 p.m. on the metal stand. And I was like, this is the best tasting Bloody Mary I've ever had in my life. So shout out <laughs> Zing Zang. Yeah. Shout out everything else for that. So had a few of those Bloody Marys myself. They were pretty, uh, pretty tasty. Um, yeah, that was so cool to watch, man. I mean, like you, that, that bronze medal match was super exciting. You guys like, I mean, you guys were just locked in. You could tell that it was intense right next to you. Uh, there was also Scott golden in a match who was getting an argument. It was like, I was like, I was like, what in the hell is going on over here? It was super intense and contentious, but at the end of it, you know, it was, uh, it was all good. And you guys came out victorious. I got to shout out Scott Golden, previous guest, awesome podcaster, everything involved with pickleball. I was, um, it was, I don't know, the second game, and uh, I had a put away shot in overhead, and uh, the ref for the bronze medal said, ball on court. So I finished the motion, but half asked it, for lack of a better word, just like half went through the motion, and I netted it. And I was just like, okay, ball on court. And she's like, as I'm turning around, she goes, that didn't affect your shot. And I was like, what? You screamed ball on court. That's yeah. going to affect my shot. And Scott overheard that. And he immediately yelled. He never he never met me. So until this point, I told him on Saturday after it happened. And he goes, that affected everyone. Because that affected us. That affected you guys. That affected that. And so she took a good 30 seconds and thought about it. And she made the reasonable outcome. She said, yeah, that affected it. We weren't even serving. So it was like just no one gets a point. But it was cool to see. Um, a person that didn't even know that I was a former podcast guest nor know who I was just, you right. know, when somebody yells out ball on court and somebody, you know, it's, if you're in a golf and you're in the tee box and you're swinging somebody yells four, you're going to, you know, half swing through the shot or to make a baseball analogy, you know, if the umpire calls time, you're not going to stop your motion. You're going to get the pitch out. Otherwise that's going to do more effects to it. But anyway, Shout out Scott Golden. Keep using Nelly and all the promo videos, man. St. Louis, St. Lunatic, stand up. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was fun to watch, man. Uh, that, that match was awesome. I was so glad I was able to make it back in time. So, yeah, so you guys were up in the metal stand and life is good. Had your, uh, your Zing Zang Bloody Mary. Um, it was cool. That must've been, that must've been pretty exciting, you know, to, to pull off that match at the U S open. That's great, man. It's just good to go home with some extra uh, luggage. I want to yeah, right. my luggage before I left and then add that extra $5 medal 0.6 of a difference in luggage weight. 
that really makes the difference, man. So Julianne Smith, God bless you. Uh, God bless Andrew Christopoulos as well, too, my men's doubles partner. And God bless everybody I played against for my hot-headedness. So thank you guys <laughs> for putting up with my Nick Kyrgios ways. I appreciate that. Love it. Um, that's awesome, man. So I know I brought this up earlier, but this was your second year in the row that you were there. Uh, what are some of the improvements that you saw at the U S open between 2018 and 2019 courts? Uh, amazingly, like the, the, you can tell they resurfaced everything. I think mm -hmm. 2018, um, do you know the court numbers behind yep. championship court? Uh, Oh, 20. Um, I know what you're talking about the, yes, the, the one that's like, um, kitty corner from the right championship behind the, like, court. Right behind the zing zang courts. Yep. Yeah, those ones right behind there, like 23, 21 through 29 or whatever. Yep. The ones right behind those were temp nets in 2018. And, you know, when you ever get put on there, you're like, you knew the numbers and you're like, ah, you know, whatever. It's fine. You know, we're all used to playing in gyms and stuff. So it was right. all good. But in the same sense, it was so nice to see that they redid all that and everything. And um, one through gotta, nine as well were redone. Of it. I don't know if you noticed that, yeah. but one through nine last year, those were tennis courts that had temp nets up and the surfaces were horrible. They were cracked. They were like this, this light green and light yellow color that it was hard to see the lines. I hated playing on those. And so it was nice to, uh, I'm glad they resurfaced those as well. That, that was a huge thing just from a player perspective, but from just the uh, spectator perspective, the new names that roll and then it's like the, uh, the, you know, the classics, like the, the, if you had to do a top 10 of all the pros that you saw, they're still there. They're mm -hmm. still rocking it. Maybe they have a new paddle. Maybe they have a new sponsorship. Maybe they're the same spot or all of it. It's just so cool because we all talk about how we still haven't seen the greatest pickleball player of all time, but they're still there. They're still, you know, in, in the same sense too, the, the best there is in the sport and then just, you know, repeat victories from the likes of Tyson McGuffin when it comes to um, singles and Simone Jardine with the uh, singles as well, too. And then uh, Kyle and Ben, you know, Kyle consistently crushing it at men's doubles. And, you know, Dave Weinbach in every men's doubles final. And just it's so cool because I think part of what this sport is is that we need some people that are, quote, unquote, the names mm -hmm. of the sport. And these people are. And they're continuously around in the sport and the newcomers. And I'm, I'd be um, remiss if I didn't mention some of the hometown heroes we have around here, like Andrea Coop and uh, Shane Stokes. I mean, you know, Andrea and Maggie, her sister, they played against each other in 2018. And now in 2019, they're on the same side of the court. And they're becoming, you know, some of the more recognizable names in terms of mixed doubles and women's doubles that there is. Um, Shane Stokes, he won 4-5 last year. Now he's competing at a 5 0 level with his brother, uh, Brian Brooks and Jordan DeWeird. Um, yeah. They won 4 5 uh, gold medal on championship court. I think the first live stream of the day. Mm -hmm. And man, I remember competing with Brian at the 3 5 level way back in the day and him learning to stroll. And now I've, I think I have tattoos all over my body from what Brian is hitting against me. Here at this, this is cool, man. You start to nerd out here as I'm doing right now. It's like it becomes like I feel like we're all at Comic Con, and then you know, there's like a fifth lead in some superhero movie, and now all of a sudden they're the you know leader of an army at that point. And so it's so cool to see how from 2018, I think Brian Brooks played four or five and went 0 and 2, and now you know, 2019, you know they won every match that they had right. and they won the gold medal. So it, it's so cool to see how that progresses. And then, in, you know, in the Shanes of the world too, you know, from winning it at four or five to going to five Oh and competing at a high level at that point too. And I know that that's not the stop for him. And then, you know, Andrea Coop from being a name last year, that was just like, she's competing at a pro level. Now she's a name at right. the pro level. So mm -hmm. that's me being a Homer and stuff too, but it's just so cool just to see how, the sport progresses and the names that maybe we didn't really get to see in 2018 are now prominent names in 2019. And then names that didn't even play at the U S open in 2018 now are, Oh my God, you're winning bronze at the you know pro level. Right, like, right. where are you from? <laughs> Stop doing this. Yeah. <laughs> like, Just, yeah. It, unbelievable. The, the talent and you know, what, 
what we've seen, like you were mentioning, these people last year till now, the improvement that they've made, people that were doing okay back then, now are names in the sport. It's it's unbelievable to watch. Uh, and it's even more unbelievable to watch from the Margaritaville Lounge. I got to tell you, uh, that like having the patron pass and guys, they're not cheap. They really aren't. It, it was Christmas gifts for me and my wife to get each other. And it's not cheap, but man, watching games from back there with access to the Margaritaville Lounge Bar, um, drinking my weight in Land Sharks every day while watching some top pickleball right there, you know, being behind all the action during every live stream and the upcoming CBS Sports broadcast on May 24th or whatever it is. Like, there is nothing better than watching games from that Margaritaville lounge. And it's funny because I watched all of last year's matches and I saw everybody in the lounge. I was like, oh, that looks cool. But I couldn't really, you know, get a total feel for it. Now that I've been in there, oh man, so amazing. Absolutely. I had a blast hanging out in there the entire week. To be that close in proximity to a sport that you love so much, to give anyone perspective, imagine if you're, God, I don't know, the biggest NFL fan, you're a cop, and all of a sudden you're on sideline with cocktail rounds, Yeah, you know, enjoying whatever you indulge in and being able to get to watch that at, you know, its highest level. Slightly less fans than uh, AT&T Stadium, Jerry's World, but <laughs> yeah, it still slightly. feels like the highest it's ever been at that point. You know, if you want to use a tennis perspective, just to be able to be on the side on the sideline. And, and that's the craziest thing about this. You ball boys. And have anything, and you know some of these points go long, and they go in the lounge. And here's a guy with a land shark logger being like, "Oh, I'll pick up this ball and throw it back to you know people competing in a gold medal match." Right. It's so cool to like the guys like high fiving people to be like, "I, <laughs> I call <laughs> Like, it just yeah. feels cool, and that that's just like, I almost feel like. I, I hope feel like 10 years from now, that's going to seem like I remember in my day when I was in the margarita lounge <laughs> yeah. and you got to have unlimited drinks and got to get a ball and throw it back to Irina Tarashenko. <laughs> and, you know, it was so it seems so like mentile. So we actually had one ball boy. Remember that guy? Yeah. Yep. You, you know, that was actually, was like, it. yeah, that was, that was, um, uh, my neighbor's, friend's son who was the ball boy i got to play with him the week before in fact uh my my men's partner and i matthew gear played with him um whatever night that was i think it was monday night after you guys left our quickly after you guys left our courts uh we uh, we actually okay. played against him but yeah he was the ball boy. i think he's 14 years old good kid yeah that, that's just funny it's just cool yeah that was amazing, man. Like I said, Margaritaville Lounge, super cool. The Zing Zang courts are cool. What else is funny is I was just there on Sunday playing for uh, just doing some rec play Sunday morning, and the bleachers are still up. Everything else is down, but those what? big giant bleachers were still there. And I was like, what? What's? I, yeah. So I, I walked into the Margaritaville Lounge like, all right, man, I just got done playing about two hours of pickleball. Going to have my house self a land shark and nothing. There's nothing back there, but... Oh well, <laughs> it's a real buzzkill. You know that's what it is. We I get to be the uh, I goes in there for the um, spectacle of it and then leave. You know, right. so it's like you yeah. guys are you get to see after all the uh, after all of the dust settles. Yeah, it's definitely different. And man, everybody went back up north because usually Sunday mornings. It's you know a month ago Sunday morning, hundred percent capacity waiting for courts. And I think we were at maybe 20% capacity Sunday morning. So everybody went back, went back home. Well, I give kind of to you. Last match I've played in the last point I've ever served <laughs> yeah. bronze medal. So I'm two weeks broke from pickleball, which is oh. crazy. I'm going through withdrawals here at this point. I know. So I was going to say. played on the Sunday after it. Yeah. Yeah. Getting the shakes. I, I know I definitely would. But. Um. You know, speaking of that too, I know that, and and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but the vendor tents, they they were air conditioned this year, but last year they were not. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. 
I, I love them. I thought there were some amazing booths there. Uh, I went to the Monarch booth. I, you know, I did a whole vlog video on it of all the different booths that were there. Um, the Monarch was one was great. cool with the with the giant paddle. Um, every single one of them was pretty solid. But I got to tell you, there's one place that I went to every single day after the first day I was there, and that was the little nutrient booth. And I got my uh, my Leah special, the double chocolate with coffee. And man, let me tell you, since then I've placed two orders with nutrient products here. I ordered um, two 30 packs of the individual coffee. And uh, now I'm ordering my second round of those chocolate shakes because they are incredible. And I, they're not sponsoring this episode by any means. I'm just a big fan of their product. But one thing I love about them is after you're done eating or drinking their product, I'm completely full. I'm not, I don't have any cravings or anything like that. It's just, it's unreal yeah. how like they obviously do a good job with making their products, uh, giving your body the nutrition you need to where you're not craving a bunch of food after it. Did you, uh, did you end up going there oh, to I the nutrient you. booth? Oh. Yeah. Oh man. I'm, are we good? Is audio good? Everything? Yeah, it broke up for a second there, but we're good. Okay. Uh oh, let me know. I can move. Wait, no, I loved, I love the nutrient booth. Um, full scale. I mean, realistically, yeah, too. I got to met, meet her. She was absolutely so amazing of a person. But not only that, just such a great perspective person for the sport. Mm -hmm. Because she had a great observation to me. I went there just to literally. Get the drinks just because I eat too much because I was between matches. But in addition to that, just to also like, just see what this, cause I had heard people read about it all week long. And just for whatever reason, I was just, you know, drinking Buddy Mary's or doing something else. And so it was like this, but I needed it. And uh, she came out and spoke with us and she said such a great thing. She said a lot of these tournaments that I go to, because the coolest thing about that is that a couple of them are players. They play in the sport and Leah in particular, I loved because she said I play this sport from when I have a lot of the nutrients in this sport. Are, you know, not only just nutrients, but like find is like players they have to meal prep to go to tournaments because you know anything available. A lot of tournaments are like hot dogs, right? Or you know, you know, hot rice from like whatever, whatever they got, which is fine. Old bananas, you know, which works. But it's just if we're gonna be sport it's going to compete at a national level. There's other things, you know, th there needs to be things for players. And so there, I can, I mean, I, I, you're right. They're not a sponsor. My God, it almost legitimized it mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like absolutely. it felt cool, cool to just have, have like, I see, uh, you know, a, to use a back, like, I don't know, a term that most people are like a job, a juice right. at that. That yep. people would, you know, understand the nutrients and everything that goes along with it. So, yeah. Yeah. Very no, cool. I was so grateful they had something healthy there too, because I was worried about it, but I was impressed with the food um, and, you know, the food available in the Margaritaville Lounge, I think was good too. All the, all the booths, the whole vendor tent was awesome. It was just a awesome experience. But there's another thing too that, you know, I, I'm really hoping you can talk to, um, Outside of Florida, or maybe even the states that border Florida, there were a lot of groups that were represented at the U.S. Open, right? And you could tell they were groups. They were all kind of getting together yeah. and taking pictures in front of the U.S. Open sign. Um, you know, they, they kind of wore that badge proud. But I got to tell you, man, it seemed like the Michigan pickleball community showed up and dominated a lot of that. Can you can you talk about that at all? It's a broad perspective and a lot. I think we had 91 participants mm -hmm. in the entire uh, state of Michigan. And I don't know, man, it's it's a compliment. I, I feel like growing up in this community and growing up, it's, it's just you're learning pickleball community. It's just cool because there's a lot of people I feel like that take it very seriously around here and compete at a high level. So, um, man, I, I think I sent you the numbers. I don't have them directly in front of me, but um, what I love about it is just that, man, I feel like not only do we show up, but hopefully relevant, and it's just 
cool to all things. Like, I mean, just to not speak about the Michigan perspective, but at one point, um, Annalie Waters and Kyle Yates, I think, were the most attracted people to watch during a day during the mixed age day, and it was I I, I was never because it was just to watch a girl with arguably one of the more recognizable names in the sport and you know kicking butt mm -hmm. they're amazing together so they were playing and that was going to be a fan favorite you know but they were yeah. playing against a team doubles team from canada people part of this canadian team they tax as basically windscreens <laughs> on one part of the net or net the uh, fence to be able to block all this and you know they're going against the best team and you know they're their own but they're also you know they're getting by them but every point they won it was like the entire country was yelling for them it was unbelievable so you know they made a loss 411 but my God, man, it was so cool to be able to see that there was representation to be able to people just a whole entire country being like, we're going to root for these awesome guys that are wearing Canadian, you know, maple leaves and, yep. you know, flags up and everything. So it was cool representation. Sorry, man. Tangany. No, it's good, man. I, I totally agree with you. It was, it was really co cool to see these little pockets of, uh, of people across the country that kind of came together. I saw a big representation from Brazil. That was pretty cool to be able to see that. Like, I just feel like all over yeah. the place, you, you saw these little communities. Um, and I know that Michigan holds a, a place in my heart because it's where I'm from. It's where I live for the first 30 some years of my life. But man, unbelievable. We saw 19 gold medals and 47 total medals out of the 91 that participated in the US Open from Michigan. I mean, that's like... That's solid. I'd, I'd like to see nice. any other group out there compete. I, I you know, and he actually, I'm going to throw a challenge out there. If anybody out there now or in the future watching this podcast knows of an area that's outside of Florida, right? It's unfair because it was in Florida, but outside of Florida and maybe within five hours of Naples, tell us about it because I think it is going to be hard to compete with the performance that the Michigan pickleball crew brought to the U S open. That's, oh yeah I, I man i'm all in for that challenge and what i like that yeah one of my um one of my favorite things is, is uh that in that group that seen you know, those that were one and in the 19 people blame uh corinne and Simone as actual michiganders because they mm -hmm. started pickleball in here but obviously they didn't include him in there but that's these are true people that saw michigan as a residence here at this point but it was funny to be like oh man well we can moni we can call we can right. various we can call right. michael leonard we you know they start with that and you're like no 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 they gotta be here here right now so right a lot of fun yeah that was solid man um you know matt honestly i feel like i feel like i could talk all night about the u.s open I know I loved it. It sounds like you had a, an amazing time there as well. Um, I actually had a ton of other stuff that I wanted to be able to try and cover with you, but you know, we just, we, we got going on a lot of this. Um, so we're not going to be able to, but here's the thing, right? You're a pickleball player, but you're also a comedian. Uh, and, and I've been dying to see one of your shows, man, live. I know I've seen some of your videos on YouTube. I want to see it live. Can you kind of tell uh, tell all of the thousands of people out there listening right now how they can follow you, find out about what you got going on? Yeah. I am all over every social media, just in different variations because I'm dumb. <laughs> Any PR person would tell you, don't do that. Mainstream it all across one thing. Um, I'm on Instagram. That's probably the best way to follow um it has nothing if you just search my name matt loria matt l a u i a you'll find me but if you want to be difficult and find a handle it's party girl chica 420 um <laughs> g-u-l because i'm difficult uh to find me on it's not if i try act live you'll understand why it's that but, but in addition to that um 
I have a decent amount of shows coming. If you're in the Midwest, um, predominantly in the summer, I try to let uh, comedy go as the second job here right now. But outside of that, um, I like to be able to have uh, a bunch of different shows throughout the state of Michigan and beach town. So I'm in Ludington, Michigan. Um, nice. June 1st, I'm in Kalamazoo the weekend of the 8th. Um, I'm featured in my hometown here of Grand Rapids at Dr. Grin's Comedy Club uh, with an amazing name, Vince Carone, uh, the the last weekend in June. Great opportunity to come out and see me. That's me at my home, most comfortable, at the yeah. longest set. And then, uh, God, throughout the rest of the time, I'm actually going to do, during the Beer City Open, do a uh, guest set for anybody that's in town that wants to come out and just do go up there and do 10 minutes and stuff. And, um, hell yeah. Uh, I don't want to reveal it, but, uh, one of the top in the game said that they like to start to get into comedy. And if I had any advice, oh, uh, oh what yeah. would they do? And I'm suggesting that if they're going to the beer scene, I might be able to get open mesh guests at a comedy club in town here. So, so if you're coming to the Beer City Open, think of your top five pros, and one of them, and they might be trying comedy here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, at the Beer City Open. So, Ooh, I'm oh, excited. I, I think to find out. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think I know awesome. who it is. I think, I think I saw that conversation take place. So I think I know who it is. But my lips are sealed. Yeah. Yep. Oh man, well that'll be a future podcast. That's me. Hey. That's me, Webby, not getting on the podcast for just beer. I can get on it for other things, too. Nice. And I got to tell you, I've, I've been dying to learn more about your comedy background, your comedy right. career. So that, that would be awesome. And uh, you mentioned that you're going to be doing some comedy in Kalamazoo. Speaking of Kalamazoo, I am doing a tournament in Kalamazoo next month, the Great Lakes Regionals. Do you happen to be competing in that as well? I'm in. I'm in for that. Just men's doubles. But nice. uh, I don't think... Same here. I mean, maybe we can something... Um, I can I can figure it out. Let, let's let's talk here, Webby. All right. Nice. Let's do that. Well, Matt, thank you so much for being on the show. Three-time. I'm the three-time Eddie and Webby champion. You're the three-time yeah. guest. You were uh, you were a, a, a guest host one time. You were like a co-host one time. Tonight you were just like an actual guest talking about the U.S. Open. The three-time, I love it. I hope to have you on again. I hope you'll 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 be interested in uh, in coming on again. And your comedy career doesn't blow up to the point where you're like Schmetti and Webby. Who who are these jokers? <laughs> well, one one real quick thing here, man. I think uh, pickleball. Was blowing up. I've had the opportunity to open for some of the bands. There's two in this world named Pete Cor Corielli, Bastian Menescalco. That's a lot of Italian to be <laughs> thrown at. <laughs> but uh, both of them are amazing comedians in their own right. Uh, uh, Menescalco was on the top Forbes comedians in 2018 for top earners. Um, top 10. I mean, that includes the likes of Aimer, Jerry Seinfeld, Chris rock bastion and pete have a podcast called the bastion show and it started playing pickleball not started but really competing at a high level and to tease this for a lot of that are here go search it uh sebastian meniscalco actually gets an invite to pickleball at the one and only leonardo dicaprio's house so he's all with leonardo nice. dicaprio and it might be the best of our Sport of pickleball, just Leo to me is untouchable. But the long and the short of it is, is man, look, this is like these guys are unbelievable comedians, great colors. Uh, if you guys can find that one, there's the actually, actually, the episode description says, and Sebastian plays pickleball. There's other actors that are there, it's wild. But I bring it up because even if I become a Sebastian Calco of pickleball, I am gonna still play pickleball. It don't matter how big a comedy. I mean, this is he now is on the road playing pickleball wherever, whatever city he's in and stuff. And actually, a, a daily correspondent friend of mine who actually played 
number one singles for Illinois um, tennis, Michael Costa. He's an amazing comedian. Yeah. And player in Grand Rapids when he came into town. And uh, he, he hasn't played since because he doesn't really understand what it is. But I played him in singles and his passing shots and everything else. He's unbelievable. So we just got to keep getting everybody that we know plays goofy sport that will goofy anymore. Yeah, I love it, man. The, just so you know, that's um, episode 351 of the Pete and Sebastian show. That's the one you guys got to listen to. And I agree with you, Matt. It's hilarious. So, some of the funniest pickleball content you will ever hear. It's hilarious. Leonardo DiCaprio with a sport that we all love. <laughs> and then you get two passionate Italians talking about it. I forced so many people out of our house and we had a party one night. <laughs> Right to thing, and everybody was still entertained, being that we all, uh, uh, you know, had a few more pot on this podcast. Yeah, and it was 11 p.m. So yeah, good times. That was a lot of fun. Um, nice man. Well, thanks again, Matt, for being on. Appreciate the beer as always. Appreciate you coming on and uh, talking pickleball and comedy and uh, just overall good stuff with us, man. Thanks. Thank you to you guys, man. I don't know you guys. I couldn't find my Eddie shirt, but it's in a drawer. I'm wearing it next podcast. Eddie and Webby forever. I'll take them. <laughs> nice, man. <laughs> nice. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for joining us again. Always a great time. All right. And I think, did we lose them? Oh, I think we lost them. Okay. Well, I guess that was kind of good timing. Um, always a great time having Matt on. If, yeah, if his signal's going to go out at the very end, it's probably a fitting time, so that's not too bad. But yeah, I, I love talking to Matt. Yeah. Um, even if a majority of the people tuning in have no idea who he is, I don't care. It's awesome. <laughs> I love talking to him, and uh, I'll definitely have him on again as long as he sends me more beer. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. Ah, good show, man. Um, it is after nine, yeah. so guys. Um, we're, we're, we're going to take this down and we're going to come right back with dinking around with Eddie and Webby. So please stay tuned. Uh, don't go anywhere. Um, but if you are going to go somewhere, Steve Parento's show just started a few minutes ago and he has Enrique Alcandor Ruiz on tonight. Uh, so hopefully, I think that'll probably be a good show. So if you are going to leave us, you should definitely go check that out, but don't leave us. Yep. Stick around. Right, but uh, if, but Steve's show, it's a live call-in show, so if you want to call in to a live show, by all means, go ahead, tune into his show, check ours out later, at a later time. But if you want to join us live, or we might actually have somebody that's already planning on joining us Ooh. live, then you'll definitely want to stu- stay tuned. Um, and fun fact, we do, we have somebody lined up to join us. <laughs> they already nice. said they want to join us, so and you're not going to want to miss it. So stay tuned or watch okay. after Steve's show. <laughs> and you're not going to want to miss what's going on next week and webby would you like to share with everybody what our next podcast is going to be oh man our next episode it's a milestone it's the big 4-0 the 40th episode of the eddie and webby podcast and our guest i am super excited to announce is going to be the one and only tyson mcguffin oh yeah yes. cannot be- wait for that yeah, that's next Thursday. So what is that? The 23rd. Uh, what time are we going on? Do you remember that time, Webby? It will be 7.30 p.m. Eastern time with so- Tyson McGuffin. Yes. Can't wait for that. Um, and this was episode 39. So I want to give a big thank you to all 39 of you out there that are still listening. We appreciate you. We love you. You know who you are. And you guys are awesome. Don't go anywhere, though. Stick around. Because we're going to be coming right back up with Dinking Around with Eddie and Webby. And on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. See ya.